Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Buckeyes of all ages, you are now tuning into the Boomcast. Introducing first, it's your host, NFL vet, Buckeye legend, Daniel Boom Heron. Accompanying him is the Boom Squad. First up, from the presidential penthouse, we got former coal miner, fitness industry expert, Mr. Corey Gregory. Over here at the Tyler Tyler Sports Zone, we have Athens' very own Tyler Treadway. Then we got Philo's very own Mr. Tyler T. Lover. And then of course, here's the doghouse. I'm the graphic gangster Cole Susak. To my right is the king of Web3, Trayvon the Air. And you are now tuning in to the Boomcast. The Boomcast is brought to you by Master Muscle and Sam Adams Beer. Let's go to the show. Welcome to another episode of the Boomcast. On today's show, we have two special guests. Our first guest, former Ohio State wideout from 2008 to 2011. Dog. Dog. Third round draft pick of the Houston Texans. Dog. Dog. CFL Grey Cup champion and Grey Cup MVP in 2017 for the Argonauts. Dog. 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 All around great dude who's always out here walking around smooth and offering a ton of value and content every day on that microphone. <laughs> Dog. Dog. Devere Posey in the house. Hey, uh, up, bro? hey I'm feel honored that y'all invited me back, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, made it, I made it to the top, man. All right, second special guest. Former Ohio State quarterback from 2012 to 2015. Dog. Dog. Poodle. <clears throat> <laughs> the man who is a third-string quarterback came in and led us to the promised land in 2014 in a national championship. Dog. Dog. Fourth-round draft pick of the Buffalo Bills. Dog. Dog. Co-founder and general manager and board member of the foundation and one of the best personalities we have at the Ohio State University. Dog. Cornell Jones and Owls. I, you know what? Every time I, I come and, and, and I hear Boone's comments in the beginning and calling me a poodle, <laughs> it just reminds me. I say, I'm never coming back, then I find myself back. <laughs> so, that's messed up. Well, I haven't pitched up. this to you yet, but we came up with a segment for you called uh, 12 Minutes with 12 Gauge. Okay. So, we go, so we're going to try to bring you in like Basically, like, you're better than Aaron Rodgers, you know what I'm saying? But on our yeah. show, that's our plan. So, all right, listen, obviously the Buckeyes won 17-14 in an epic, epic fucking game where they stepped up. Boom, we're going to start with you because the show's named after you. <laughs> what, what, was your, <laughs> yeah, sure. what, what are you thinking, buddy? Oh, man, anytime you can go on a road um, and win a game, that's, that's big as it is, you know. And if you go, you know, playing a team like uh, Notre Dame on the road and they're uh, well coached by, you know, Coach Freeman. And um, he had those guys ready. Obviously, they came to play. But, you know, Ryan Day did a, a great job of having our guys ready. Um, they went out there, executed, and they got the job done. Um, you know, McCord, he played well. Obviously, uh, we've we've had – you know, our thoughts about him. But uh, obviously, we knew it was early. Like, I've been telling everybody, you know, uh, it's never good enough as a Buckeye fan. Yeah. You know, you can go out there and throw for 400 yards, you know, 10 touchdowns. But, uh, you know, they always going to have something to say. But uh, I think he's uh, he's getting in a good good rhythm. Yeah. Um, he's finding himself. And um, he's doing a good job of uh, being a leader out there. I mean, I think, uh, you know, I think that last drive yes. really – really put the icing on the cake, you know, for me at least. You know, yeah. um, mm-hmm. just showing that he's he's capable of making those big big throws, those big yeah, plays. Yeah. And, uh, you know, anytime you can get a two-minute drive done, that's that's big, especially on, on the road. Yeah, for sure. Cardell, mm-hmm. what you see QB-wise? Um, this is a guy that's growing up right before our eyes, right? This is someone that had their struggles um, early on and still dealing with his struggles, right. and, and that's just part of growth as a quarterback here at Ohio State and playing at a, at a top level. Like here, he's not a young person, but he's young and experienced, right? But I think his mature level outside of his playing experience really took over that second half of that game. You look at some of his stats. I mean, I know he didn't throw for a touchdown. Uh, I know he had a few bad throws in there, but – you know, you look at the quarterbacks around the country, not just at the college level, but the professional level as well, where they really separate themselves. It's usually 
on third down and in the red zone. Yeah. On third down, I think he had almost half of his 240 yards uh, through the air. Right, big conversions, and then I think he had some big time fourth down throws, and uh, give credit to those receivers as well. And we was just talking about this before the game, and some of the things I mean before the show, and some of the things that he did pre snap or, or beat the blitz with the ball and things like that. I mean, this guy has really grown up before our eyes, and I think with the weapons around him, um, I mean, the sky's the limit for him. Yeah. yeah. What yeah. do you think, Devere? Well, I'm gonna lean into the defense, man, because Jim knows with the with 97.1, he was on the hot seat not hot seat as far as losing your job but in big games what can this yeah. defense do they go into Notre Dame they go into South Bend and they only allow one play over 35 yards so they limited explosives um when you're talking about Jack Sawyer and JT Tuomaloa having big plays and the, you know them living up to their five-star potential when we recruited these guys JT Tuomaloa on a big third down Notre Dame schemes up a huge screen he gets his hand on the ball which they had the offensive lineman on in front of that running back. Him getting his hand on the ball, that was a huge play. And I really think, I'll say it first, I think the Silver Bullets are back, man. And I think Jim Knowles is really leaning into this toughness with them, right? And I think toughness was the topic of conversation with Ryan Days after, you know, his, yeah. his post-game interview. And they showed toughness on defense. And then Sonny Styles just sliding on that fourth down, not allowing these guys to get any fourth down conversions. They stopped them twice. I mean, you're in a hostile environment and your defense comes through. I mean, they were on the field more than our offense. And I think this team is really leaning into the defense and this team is led by the defense. And then on the offensive side of the ball, just showing toughness with that last drive, like Boom was saying, man, I mean, I, I have faith in these guys. I really don't believe we're going to get into a big game and we see blowouts like that. I really think we're going to see these guys just exude toughness like we saw in Notre Dame on the road in Wisconsin, you know, at Penn State at home, going up to Michigan. Like, that's the effort it's going to take to get to 12-0 and for real. I got to tell you, like, from a fan standpoint, I was just at, like, a random uh, friend of a friend birthday party and to see the excitement – of that last drive on everybody. I was like in this like outside, it, it, it they erupted bro. Yeah. And that and that's like what we was missing like yeah. a little bit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then you see a guy like Kyle McCord make them throws, see the emotion after on the bench, mm -hmm. you know, not counting what Ryan Day was doing, which I think we all love seeing. So it's like, when you see that, you're like, it makes you want to fucking believe in those guys anymore. They needed that yeah. confidence boost. I love just seeing like that last drive, I didn't think we was going to get the ball back first off. You yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. so when we did, I was like, oh, shit. We about through. to see somebody for real yeah. step up. Yeah, yeah. And that that was – and I just think being on the edge like that, we haven't been like that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and that's, those, what, that's what it felt like. Yeah, yeah. those those make or break moments where, you know, I guarantee you, if, if, you know, and I think this kid is going <clears> to <throat> have a lot of great success as a buck. I think this is running off his senior year. But Chip, I guarantee you, if he don't make another play this whole his whole Buckeye career, everybody gonna remember him. They gonna remember that, that yes. moment. Remember right? that. So those type of moments are make or break chills, for man, guys' careers yeah. and and legacy here at Ohio State. And um, he's one of the best running backs in the country. Um, he continued to display that each and every week. And I had no clue he was a former linebacker because, you know, I had a chance to be at the game. And I'm just watching this guy pick up blisses and green dogs, which is, you know, a linebacker not intentionally blissing, but adding into the pressure mm -hmm. last minute and how he's so aggressive with that. And I'm like, oh, I, it, it makes sense now because he was one of those guys before. Sense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, this team is just tough. It's tough. It's not the toughest team. And I think they're going to continue to get tougher each and every week with, with wins like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, I wouldn't uh, – I don't want to compare them to the 2002 team, but this really – this is giving me 2002-type vibes. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, uh, in 2002, they had a lot of close games, you know, a lot of battles, but it just seems like this team is, is, is kind of – yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of the same vibes, yeah. you know. Yeah. I thought I saw Reese tweet something about that, like saying, like, "Hey, there was a lot of nail biters in '02, like Purdue, yeah. and like some mm -hmm. ones that we Michigan shouldn't have." Yeah, yeah. On a, that's what I'm saying. Uh, so that makes sense. I agree with that. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So obviously, in a game like this, I, I said it was going to come down to whichever team like can dominate up front, whichever team makes the least amount of mistakes, whichever team doesn't try to shoot themselves in the foot. Notre Dame held, had the ball for 34 minutes compared to the Buckeyes' 25. So my question is, Cardale, fourth and one on the one yard line. What play were run in the first one where they were in the play? For like, Ohio what, State. Yeah. What's your thoughts so on, the, on, on, on those two play calls? Because honestly, those so, right there, I I thought that was it. Oh, the end yeah, around. Yeah, 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 it was the jet sweep and man. stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, so like, talk about those play calls. 
Listen, I've been in those huddles where it's a for sure run situation. If it's fourth and one, if it's third and two, we got to get this conversion here. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, uh, our offensive line wouldn't even let a pass come out their mouth. It would, I don't care what the coach would have called. Well, by the time we got to the huddle, Jacoby Bourne, Pat Elfline, Taylor Decker, Chase Ferris, Dura Baldwin, Billy Price, they would be like, there's no 13 cap. And I'm like, bet, let's do it. You know? <laughs> because, yeah. because I think in those situations, especially on the road, and I know the previous three plays or two or three plays, they ran, they got two, they got three, they got one, or whatever it may be. But pop. the amount of confidence I that you that. install yeah. in your big guys up front if you go for that fourth and one and you run it right up the gut and you know, I don't care as a play caller, and I'm not knocking Ryan Day or whoever called that play. I don't care if I was a play caller in the booth and I saw something and said, hey, we got that reverse pass or whatever to do. Yeah. I'm running the ball behind my big guys. I was told, I looked at everybody in the face. We go win or lose this game. Without you. We need a half a yard. We need you to put, the, we need you to put their toes in the end zone. Mm, right? Yep. We need to change the line of scrimmage. And even if you don't have those guys that's built like that right now because they're still trying to find their way up front, mm -hmm. how much confidence that would have gave those guys. Oh, well it gave them and confidence then, yeah in no way but no they threw it yeah, yeah. but well, you so had time i was say, two plays i was gonna say no oh yeah, yeah, no no, no. we're talking about the first yeah, we're we talking about the first one we're talking about the first one the also short, why not the, the second sweep. one either though yeah we're no. talking about the first one that he yeah. threw on the goal line the yeah. second yeah. one um it was it was like a 10 yard line or something like that but both of those plays i would have told my offensive line we're going to run it right behind you and hearing as offensive lineman knowing it's a pass what that does to this guy's confidence in the huddle. You, because you're not saying it. You basically yeah. said, oh, they're not stronger than us, or they're stronger than us, they're tougher yeah. than us up front, yeah. so we need to do a dick and dunk play action. <laughs> yeah, no, but, but I think it was this, though. It was He got up to the line, he spiked it at nine seconds, two no, seconds. No, 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 we're off. talking about the, the first, first, first one. The first, the first, are we first talking about one. the goal line? Yeah, yeah the, the very first, first goal right line. Yeah, yeah, but I'm yeah, saying, yeah. I'm saying, when he got up to, after Emeka Buka caught the scene back shoulder, we had nine seconds. That's, he a, spiked, that's he the game winning drop. We're talking yeah. about the first quarter. You're I'm talking about the jet sweep. If you think about it, that first one, that first one on fourth and one or whatever it was down at the one yard line, the first one. The first one. If they just run the ball, that's like setting the tone for the offensive line like that's what i'm saying control these guys yeah and then also like that put like that, and, that, and that extends the game yeah, where, yeah yeah extends the game yeah 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 but i yeah, and you guys are right we do got to run in those situations but i think at that in those last two plays you clock the ball at nine seconds two second run of seven seconds oh no you it's got, perfect you yeah, have I think two you, great, have, yeah. you have two chances for two plays you throw one in if you can't get it throw it out in the end zone then you have a chance for a run and it's all on the line and i feel like right but you need those type of chip train them touchdowns to give Ryan Day the confidence in his yeah. offensive line for Penn State, for Rutgers, no, for agree. Wisconsin. So now for these fourth and ones, we better be in that. I want to see Chip, and I want yeah. to see him go get I it. I was honestly shocked that we didn't see that on the second fourth and one. Where exactly. They tried to run exactly. the jet sweep. I thought yeah. that was for yeah. sure like, all right, we didn't. We tried to get yeah. cute with it the first time. Let's yeah. just let's just pound these like yeah. guys. Yeah. And, and then with, with situations like that, my, I always said my red zone – offense or my third and short offense or fourth and short offense it'll be in the spread i don't want to give you the yeah Ability we to bring know. in big person yeah i don't want to give you yeah. that i don't want yeah i know we're going to run the ball but i'm going to make you i'm going to make you i'm going to make your nickel if that thing bounce i'll make your nickel make a tackle on chip mm -hmm. yep. yeah. little things like yep. that so um i would definitely love to see them spread them out a little bit more if it's going for it on fourth they're on a jet sweep um instead of you know what they did but if they get these plays, guess what, guys? We did not sit here to talk about it. We just said that yeah. the best place called. That was great. He saw yeah. something up, boot that he went yeah. for. You know, the play action pass on the fourth one or the jet sweep was a great, you know, run around the edge. So, um, I mean, I think he made up for those play calls. And yeah. he eventually saw something in the big guys up front that said, hey, we're going to win, literally, literally win or lose this game behind right you guys. Now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Hey, that, but isn't that those the, guys are confident now. That's the sauce, right? Yeah, yeah, when you're in that huddle it. right there, that's that. what everybody signs up for. Yeah, you got to put – and I and I tweeted this. I said, in situations like that, and I know you had drives like this. I, I was in the huddle with Boom. We had an Iowa drive. We had a, a Rose Bowl drive. We had um, a Penn State drive. But you put those drives in the memory bank. Boom. You say, hey, guys. And then the next time it comes up, you look everybody in the eye and say, that's what we do. We've been here before. We, we've yes. been here before. Let's go out and let's, and let's go do it. When we're in yep. Ann Arbor and we need to go get this, when it's cold, when it's, you know, when everybody is tired, the season injuries are wearing on, like, hey, man, the makeup of our team, we've already done this. So now yep. these this guys. This ain't nothing new to us. This ain't nothing new. Kyle McCord got that in the bank. I mean, those. Mm. And Cardell, you could tell me, I mean, that seam route that he hit Mecca book on the twice, he hit him yeah. twice. 
Those I think those were some of his best throw. I think that those were some of his best throws, but I think his best throw on that drive was throwing that square in the Marvin Tomorrow Harrison. Third and that long. was be- it was in four, it was he yeah. threw it over two defenders, two guys barreling down. I mean, dude put some big nuts plays out there, man. <laughs> he did, man. Yeah, and then and then I think you know, like I said, this is we're seeing a quarterback grow up and transform right before our eyes. Mm-hmm. And then he had moments where the inexperience showed, but he had moments where you were like, man. You know, this dude has been here before, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. he never seemed phased to me. And I got to give – I know this is really Ohio State-based, but I got to give Sam Hartman so much credit as well because the poise that he showed – but, I mean, he's a fifth-year, six-year senior. Yeah. And, you know, coming from a program he threw 40-plus touchdowns or close to 40 touchdowns. Yeah, he could be doctor doctorate at Notre Dame right yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> walking exactly. to the party but going, that dude his, looks like he's 30. Yeah, right. exactly. But his <laughs> poise that he showed in that game, and I think yeah. as the game continued to go on, I think Kyle started to show some of that as well mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. You, you saw him early on in that two-minute drive. I thought that was going three and out. Yeah. I thought yeah. he was going to go three and out. Mm-hmm. You know, he had a few early throws to the running back where he wasn't even out yet when you could tell he was just rushing. Rushing. Yeah. Yeah. Rattled, he though. settled down yeah, he that drive. I'm just like, holy, like, you can't teach that. Yeah. Nah. You can't teach that. So, we'll see how the season goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's encouraging. Trayvon, over to you, buddy. Yeah, man. So, like, this game was this game was just amazing. So, like, I, I feel like this game was exactly kind of like what we pictured. Like, it would be like a grind game, you know, like low scoring for sure. I didn't. I took the over. You took the over? <laughs> that was okay. stupid. Yeah, that Damn. Was, <laughs> yeah. It was like 55. Hey. 55 and a half. 55, 55 <laughs> and a half. Like, what hey, no free shot offs, but <laughs> oh, tip, you might have led Tip go the wrong right. direction, <laughs> Carnell. <laughs> Damn. Sorry, guys. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, what really had me hype about this game, though, was the Ryan Day speech at the end. So, yeah. like, Mm-hmm. The Ryan Day just like shouting out Ohio, putting on for Ohio. What Ohio University can do is like whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Ohio State. The Treadway, Ohio State. Treadway, he's infecting he you. <laughs> so, but just like it's just amazing to see that when like Ohio Ohio comes together like that because Ohio is always a state that's just shitted on you know what I mean like in the media yeah. and memes whatever it may be on the internet people are always shitting on Ohio and whenever mm-hmm. Ohio does something big you see that shit all over the media everyone is hyping that shit up so it was just awesome to see Ohio State come together get this get the win done and it was a fucking great game well and also like I think I'm a guy who I like to see like charismatic motherfuckers and Ryan they don't give you a lot bro yeah. And he might to the guys in the locker room, but we don't see that, right? And so when I see something like that, I go, Ugh. it makes me, like, want to get behind him more. Like, yeah, yeah he shouted out the fucking 90-year-old coach. Mm-hmm. Uh, fuck it, but he's in the locker room. Yeah. He's talking about Ohio against the world, but he didn't grow up here. Mm-hmm. Like, but, he, but he's embodying it. And to me, that makes me – because I'm thinking to myself, like, you got Jim Tressel, Ohio guy. You got Urban, Ohio guy. Yeah. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, this kind of brings that to me, like, a little bit closer to that – that feel mm-hmm. and uh i don't know i just like seeing that emotion even if you're a more reserved dude at some point you yeah. got to let it out yeah and i was always shocked by the ryan day hiring in the beginning because yeah, i agree uh, only reason why because you look at the history of ohio state coaches with earl bruce woody um those guys on their They're staff, all ohio guys all ohio yeah. guys or some type of ohio ties he's yeah. the first one that really wasn't so i always worried about is he really going to understand the rivalry is he going to know what it's like being Mm -hmm. from here is he going to continue to recruit here and things like that and i think some of those questions are still to be answered um, throughout his young coaching head coaching career but his comments after the game were spot on and as a player now i know yeah i want to see it now i know my guy got my back he's going to go to bat for me and i see some of the things in the media where people oh ryan day should have did that ryan day should have did that but if someone's coming for your needed to do someone's coming (laughs) after you your family your team your program the culture you established there Mm -hmm. you what what do you expect someone to say or do yeah so i don't i definitely love that fire that he showed because it was pretty much you know standing up and sticking up for his guys now coach Holtz could have literally he could have said what he wanted to say in a different manner that wouldn't have been national attention the way if you don't believe ohio state is is tougher and soft and all that you could have just said hey i think Notre Dame is tougher yeah Yeah, he knew what he was doing though yeah exactly but then again yeah this guy, he has a lot of coaching success, a lot of success in the uh, broadcast and media world. Yeah. He had a point where he ain't got no filter. He don't care. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Typical. Oh, yeah. Motherfucker, 90 yeah. years old, yeah. bro. Yeah. 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 He don't care. He ain't got to be politically correct no more. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like violent Ryan Day, man. I'll yeah. be honest. Like, 
I, I have the Georgia clip ingrained in my mind when he's walking in the stadium and he's telling the fans, you know, let's have and go and stuff like that. And, and the thing with Ryan Day, um, you have to ask yourself, you're in a unique position. Ohio, and you guys can all agree or disagree, but there's no – better job after Ohio State, right? You don't you don't leave Ohio State and go coach the Steelers or go coach the Cowboys and say, Hey man, I, I gotta energy? I gotta raise. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like no, <laughs> you're in agree. a you're in a place where you gotta let it all out and you gotta have a personality. You're at the pinnacle. You're at the pinnacle, right? And nice. it's like I feel like Ryan Day finds himself somewhere in between trust and urban, right? And and he brings that trust of professionalism. He brings that Trussle love for the people, his mental health awareness, what he's done transforming the university with COVID and the portal and NIL. I mean, he's had to deal with a lot more than any other coach has had to deal with, right? And then on top of that, the slander about Michigan. But we don't get better than Ryan Day. I mean, him in big games, but he coaches better with that energy. He coaches yes. better with that yes. violent side. And and I think, you know, it's, you know, everybody knows Hoodie Carmelo, you know, when he's training. He put a, <laughs> yeah. Hoodie Ryan Day is a dangerous motherfucker, man. I'll retweet that to be here. Hit that. Put that <laughs> hey, he's a dangerous motherfucker, man. And I and I like that shit when he, when he really lets it all out because your guys – Follow they got to see it. Yeah. Yeah. They follow I, that. Yeah. I would argue that that was like the vulnerable, like authentic, even him like in the locker room. Like yeah. it ain't looking yeah. real smooth, but it's but real. Him. But it's that's real. my point. Yeah. So he let yeah. he, and that's what he showed. And I think that's why I literally could see like regular ass fans being like, man, I, f- I fuck with this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, that's literally yeah. what they're saying. And I, was, yeah. I, I was sitting on my couch and I was like, okay, Ryan. Yes, I like, exactly. <laughs> I was like, we need more of this. Yeah, oh, yeah I wish you would do that more often. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But he let it out when it was needed, and it was, and it and it it meant more, and it's it's fucking it is good. 100%. I liked it. Sure. Sea lover. Yeah, the only people that don't like that kind of feedback is Michigan fans, and that's, <laughs> that's all right. But that's okay. I think that just feeds right back into all the players, the staff, and like you guys are saying, they they need that. You know what I mean? And so you know, this is week four, right, for the Buckeyes, and it was you know game number five for Notre Dame, but it was just like even though it came down to the very last second it felt really good that that came out as a W because those first three games, it was like, you know, you're, you're testing all the reps with these different guys and that is a part of it, but it's just like the level of competition wasn't exactly the same as Notre Dame, but we were still week in, week out. We were like, we got some questions, you know what I mean? But now it feels good to get that win and they got a buy this week too. But, um, you know, Cole was talking about time of possession and they had the ball for 10 minutes longer than the Buckeyes did. And there were several drives where I was just sitting there thinking like, man, it seems like Notre Dame is controlling the line of scrimmage a lot stronger than what maybe the Buckeyes were. So to DeVere's point, like seeing the defense be able to take control like that and really hold them, um, even though, again, it came down to the last second, it was just a lot of good things we saw this week. Oh, yeah. Felt good. Felt good. Uh, when, when you think about like tr- control the line of scrimmage, that's one thing. That was my only concern going into this game. Um, the Like who line of scrimmage, what front seven, was going to be the best. And I still gave the edge to Notre Dame. I still do after going back to this game. Um, mm-hmm. I don't think Sam Hartman got hit once outside of a, a, a broken play where he had to potentially run the ball. Um, but that's no knock on this defense. That's no knock on these guys. And I know DeVere made a <clears throat> comment earlier about the Silver Bullets is back. I wouldn't go that far yet. But I think they're <laughs> playing really good. They are, baby. You got <laughs> well, to speak in it. You got to speak into well, existence, I, I, I think baby. it's <laughs> possible. I think it's possible. Yeah. But I do think they're playing really well as a whole unit. Usually – over the, you know, historically, when you think about Ohio State defense, you think about maybe one or two names that you can like, man, you got to account for this guy. Don't throw it to Jenkins' side. Don't make sure you double-team the Bosa's or the Young or something like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, we got a lot of highly recruited guys over there, but still, I think we need to more. their yeah, – yeah, to their – Recruitment say, look, status. State base never happy, boom. Yeah, but <laughs> to, to their, to their, to yeah, their, we need more. <laughs> I think to those guys, five star or whatever, all world recruiting status for the outside looking in, it's still they're still underachieving. But I think they got so much room to grow. I think they're still playing so good together as a, a unit. unit. Yeah, and that's a what unit. I really love. That's I mean, yeah, saying. they're not getting the sacks and, and a lot of things um, isn't going traditionally their way that we would love to see when ball in the yeah. air, you know, is about to get picked off or yeah. a great chance or, hey, quarterback going to have that loan to throw the ball. Well, Sam had a lot of time to throw the ball. They bend and not breaking, though. Exactly. Yeah. They're, exactly. Breaking. They're exactly. not breaking. Yeah. But when I think of traditionally silver bullet defense is you ain't no bending. Some sacks, hey. some dogs. Yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, yeah, but I think they have that ability and have that and have those guys to get back to that point sooner rather than later. They're going in the right direction. 
They yeah. going in the right direction. You know, yeah. you know for, for for a defense to go on the road and not have any sacks, no turnovers, um, and and to hold a def- I mean, hold their offense to 14 points, it just shows you yeah. that yeah. they're really huge. playing as a unit. I, and you I know? said that from the beginning when you go into Indiana and hold that team to no touchdowns. Yeah, I don't care what. I don't care where you play at. It's yeah. not easy to do that at another mm-hmm. opponent's house. We talk so about a top five defense in the country, though. Right? Yeah. yeah, it's we, just so yeah. crazy to think, though. Like you know, I don't think we have over five sacks this year. No, no. probably not. No. You no. guys, you guys compare this team and having remnants of the twenty two thousand two team, yeah. but I'm more so compared to the my twenty fifteen team, yeah. where a lot of talent around the ball on offense, mm-hmm. right? Didn't know too much about the quarterback situations because we was going through a battle and we was underachieving there, but the defense was playing so good as so a good. unit. So I mean, good. yeah, we had Bosa, but everybody was just killing it as the a dogs. unit where everybody thought – you looked at the team on paper, right, going into the season and saw Marvin coming back and Mecca, all the – four running backs coming back, five yeah. running backs coming back, and two highly recruited mm-hmm. quarterbacks. You'd be like, oh, my God, they about to set every NCAA record on offense imaginable, <laughs> yeah. right? But they got some growing pain still to go through, and, you know, Marvin and Mecca is getting a lot more attention than they used to, and it's forcing other guys to step up. But they're taking a lot of – I mean, 240 passing yards. Don't get me wrong, that's great, but yeah. that's kind of an average day in the office for Ohio State quarterback. Oh, absolutely. Especially with these talented yeah. receivers that they have, right? Yeah. Um, but the defense. Yeah. Right, the defense yeah. is really holding this team down, and, and when you guys made the comment we earlier, got, we, this is Trevor about the defense. Yeah. Sorry, we got to no, take no. a quick break. We're, we're about to we're about to sh- shut off. We'll be right back. Well, All right, we're back. Sorry, Cardo. Go ahead and finish what you were saying. No, that that was pretty much summing That's it all it. up. Okay. I think this is yeah. led by the defense. Yeah. I wanted to ask Boom, what? Give me your, you know, RB I was breakdown about to, hey, on hey, Trey yeah. because we haven't hey. mentioned the man, and I, I thought he came say, up big. I, I, I want to know what you think about him. I was just about to say, y'all giving all the, you know, yeah. the core and all the other guys. Yeah, all yeah, what's up? Because Trey went the crazy. Running game lately, Trey man. went crazy. Because Trey been, you know, Trey yeah. been doing his thing. He's he coming shit. through. He's cashing out, he, right? He, the last couple games, the last two games, he's he's been doing it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then you got Chip coming in, and he's doing his thing, and he's he's not even getting the touches like that. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like you love to see that, but you need that, man. When you don't yeah. have a quarterback that has – a lot of experience. You got to have your running backs. You know, getting those first downs, getting those big runs, getting getting some touchdowns, and those guys definitely showed up, especially on the road. You know, on the road. Fourteen for one hundred and four. That's yeah. a crazy amount. That's efficiency. Oh, yes. Yeah, seven four. Yeah, yeah right. so and, and I love that, it. Yeah, that big that big run he had <laughs> when we stopped him on fourth down was huge. <laughs> I said, I mean, me and Coach Alford, he's the only coach on the staff that is still there when I was there, and me and him got a really good relationship, and we. We kind of, you know, talked about it. I guess he asked my opinion as an analyst now yeah. about the team, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. And I shared it with him. I said, you know, great team up front. It's going to be tough. And I said, this game will be won by your room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Straight mm-hmm. up. And we laughed and talked about it early. He's like, oh, you do know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> right, so, I'm like, yeah. yeah, but simply, though, because no. especially as an environment like that, you have to, you know, Coach Mickey's always say, you're going to – when you – Play in a hostile environment like that, especially on the road. You got to pack two things: your run game and your tough draws. Yeah. That's yep. what you got to. <laughs> and I think they did a great job of bringing yeah. them both. And, and you look at the end of the game, uh, you know, you know, Travion and Chip. You know, the way Chip didn't, you know, didn't have too many carries, but the things that but, he was doing in the passing game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Travion and I mean, these guys are unbelievable, and it helps. I guarantee you, helps with a young quarterback, especially with the inexperience of having a, yeah. a run game and and knowing that hey, they, it ain't all on me. Yeah. They definitely getting overlooked, and I just want to show them boys some love because yeah, you know sure. they've been doing their job. You know, mm-hmm. um, it's kind of like you know how Tress used to say. You know, when we played the team from up north, you know, one yard is like three yards, three yards is like five yards, and a lot of people don't understand. Like it's hard. It's hard to uh, to average four or five yards a carry, and these guys been doing that, you know. So shout out to those guys, they picking it up, and we just got to keep that momentum going. So right. boom, do you think the offense is gonna ride with Chip and Trey this year, and kind of let Mayan have the, you know, be the lead back next year? Because I've been, I was kind of like thinking about that whole running room dynamic preseason because it was like, oh, we got five guys, we got Pryor, we got Hayden, we got, oh, you know. Man. So it, what's your forecast? on the running back room to finish the year going into next year? Well, I think uh, we learned the last two weeks who our two top Two backs are. are. Right, right, right. You know, I, I, I think we definitely got to lean on Travion, you know, being healthy, mm-hmm. uh, making big plays, and then Chip coming in and making big plays, you know, uh, running the ball and blocking. Yeah. Like, like yeah. Cardell said, that's a, that's a big, huge part of playing running back is, is, is being able to block and catch the ball 
out the backfield, especially when you're mm-hmm. playing for a guy like Ryan Day who likes to spread it out and, you know, you might get some uh, some check downs, you might get some swings, you might get some reels. These guys are doing a great job of making those plays. It's not all. It's not always about you know running the ball and you know pounding, pounding. It's it's what can you do when you don't have the ball in your hand. Mm-hmm. And these guys are doing a great job at that. So, but I would say definitely right now, you know who our two guys are. Yeah. Um, and that's that's Travion and uh, Chip. Mm-hmm. I like it. Uh, on the treadway with our Ohio State hater segment. Yeah, Trevor. What was your <laughs> I, I, I know you had some good ones. Yeah. Well. My initial thought is, is <laughs> this motherfucker. First off, oh, I, 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 I lost my bet on okay. Ohio State, but I took Ohio State to cover this. Oh, you actually did. Three and a half, yeah, and yeah. they won by three. So shout out to them for not being able to cover the spread. Um, yeah. But so, so I want to like. This is just me watching football as a fan. Um, on the last drives, and, and you three are like the perfect people to ask because you're all offensive players, right? So when you get the ball, like Cardell, is you're, you're the quarterback, right? The coach calls in the play, and you kind of know what is going to happen. Like, you got to score a touchdown. Like, you got to score to win. How much of the game plan are you following, or are you like, fuck this, I'm Cardell <laughs> Jones. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to make something happen. And then from a running back and a receiver standpoint, like, you guys are, are dogs, right? Like. Ohio State has this otherworldly offense. Like, how much of that is these guys coming up to McCord and saying, hey, get it to your playmakers, we'll make a play? And then how much of that, like the quarterback, are you like, I'm following the game plan or I'm going to go off script and just try to make something happen? That's a thin line. I think, um, first and foremost, when you get the play and the headset or for the signal from the sideline, you're going to go through the game plan. You're going to go through the proper reads. But when things isn't there, that's yeah. when that instinct kick in and like, okay, oh, it's not there. What I do? Take it. No, that's when you try to start and create. And then you do have situations where, like I said before, I don't care what the coverage was at the time that they threw the fade. I think they tried to throw the fade. I was throwing it to Marvin Harrison any point of the time at that yeah. point. I think when they – seven okay. seconds left, they uh, threw one in the end zone. That's the point where I don't – I guarantee you the coaches already know who the dogs is, but, mm-hmm. you know, as a quarterback, you're like, yeah, I'm not even looking at anyone else. I'm not looking at defense. I don't see yeah. nobody but number 18. Yeah. Right. So it's a thin line between there. You never want to go out there and just, you know, go straight backyard football. Mm-hmm. But then it is a time and place for all of that. But, you know, it probably really only happened maybe – four or five times a season where you just like, man, screw all this. I'm about to just go out here and (laughs) and kill it. Or I'm about to go through my first read and say, screw it. My first read, I'm about to run somebody over, like something like that. How many times did you try to do that? (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Or or how many times did you want to do that? I think think, um, I look at a situation where I can remember on top of my head where um, it was like, screw all this. I'm about to make something happen is when we was a national championship game. And it was a quarterback sneak. And I just looked at those guys up front. Like, we, there's no way I'm about to get through there. And I just ran around. <laughs> <laughs> I ran around. Yeah, I just, I and that. I remember running around. There was around. no one there. Yeah, I was well, in the building. I, yeah, well, yeah. I'm, it yeah. was – no, it was – they were just breathing fire. It was – they had everybody in the A gaps and the B gaps. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, let me just figure this out. But you like, got You better get that shit. Uh, man, listen, though, listen. Though. So, what I was thinking this whole time, yeah. like, I was sitting in my head – if I don't get this, he go kill me. He go kill me. <laughs> he go kill me. Kill me. But, you know, there's no play. That play isn't drawn up to say, hey, Cardell, yeah. if it's three guys in the A-gap, I want you to run around, make one guy miss, then jump over the other guy for yeah, the no. first down. Because, yeah. no, that's when your instincts, that's when that dog kick in. It was just like, I'm not even about to waste my time and try. I said, go and ran. Yeah, no. Yeah. And my thing is, is it's – it's drawn up like that way and that's why that drive is so beautiful yeah it's great because you win the game but like from an execution standpoint when you come to the sideline and you're looking at the ipad we used to just talk about it or say like what are you guys seeing like hey man like we can hit the seam or you know oh man like they've been playing too high like remember we got that backside dig or you know things like that that those conversations happen it's not a lot. It's just not all Gatorade drinking. They're talking about execution Absolutely. and things that they see. And so when you go out for the last drive, the coordinator, the head coach, the quarterback, the receiver, every, anybody pass eligible has to be on the same page to where it's like, you know, we might be calling a play, but it's like, hey, I got a spot right on the linebacker. I know I might just need to get in this linebacker way because I know Boom is swinging. And we don't – I don't. it's not for me. This is so – Boom can catch it on the swing. But you got to have it, right? Like that – I think that route that Emeka Buka ran when he, he pressed that inside corner and then he just settled in the zone, that was probably a conversation on the sideline. Like, hey, Kyle, stop trying to throw it over top. 
Just sat on a minute, right? Just right that under the, the line. Ball. Yeah, right yeah. under the, the the safety. Don't and be greedy with it. Don't mm-hmm. be greedy. And then like so those those drives are not off script. Those are like hey, we adjustments. Talk, they're adjustments. We talked about this. We are gonna have this in the game. We didn't get to it in the first first three quarters. We're gonna get to it right now. All y'all gotta do is make sure y'all execute. And that's why I think that drive was like just it was mastery because you have those adjustments, and then the guys go out there and just click on all cylinders, and you're like, oh, wow, like we hit everything. And that's what I'm saying. Like when you can do that, you should be able to do that in the first quarter next game. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like you shouldn't have to go to the wire, guys, and make everybody, you know, squeezing their ass cheeks at the house. You know what I'm saying? Like, man. <laughs> like, but, but when you talk about little stuff like that, like yeah. finding zones and stuff like yeah. that, mm-hmm. I think about the, one of the guys who's the best guys to ever do it and it's going at a very high level right now, is Travis Kelsey. Yes. Mm-hmm. If you ever – I guarantee you guys, like, a play will look like this. If it was a stick route, it's three by one, right? He run a stick, he run out, he run a go, right? If Travis Kelsey got this stick route, one play may look like this, one play he may run up and sit down, one play he may turn out. It's just getting in space and, and, and letting that dog really mm-hmm. take over mm-hmm. and understanding space and being on the same page as your quarterback. I think that's a huge deal with that. And I ain't telling, hopefully, none of Ohio State guys listen to this and say, Oh, I'm going to do the Travis Kelsey. <laughs> yeah. right. But they had ESPN had did a draw up of his plays, like from his 10 yard and everything. And they all looked like it was like all different routes. Yeah, man. exactly. Just getting into that space and letting that dog really take over and uh, really just, you know, being a football player at that time. Yeah, that's big on like. Your weak process, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, watching film, watching the defense, and finding the holes in the defense. Because, yeah. uh, like you said, you could have a certain play where you're supposed to be a certain place, but you might have seen something on, on film where it's like, oh, he going to be in this area. So yeah. I'm gonna so stop let me go this is what yeah, they're yeah, doing. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. switch I, it up. Dude, I go back to – I remember when me and you was with the Bills and we was playing the Lions, and I'm talking to you before I say, go. I'm like, no, don't run it. Just turn around. Let's go up there and turn around. Like, and I run it. I'm like, yeah. Because yep. I know the style of defense or whatever, and someone's going to be in it. Why well, would I run him to someone else's zone? Little things like that. And I'm pretty sure you and had oh, man. end cuts where I'm, okay, it's a 20 yard I'm in. Going I'm going to catch the ball. Killed. Exactly. You know what oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> running this like a damn. <laughs> I man. ain't Come doing on, it. Yeah. The biggest thing was the spot route, like, because we, the, our running backs would swing from the offset running back position. You said in the pick. And yeah. I'm just like, yo, I don't even. I remember it was a game. I looked at Terrell like, man, throw it over here, bro. <laughs> like, don't even look. Don't even go through the read because right. the corner is gone. Like, we, yeah. we picking up 15. Just get it out quick. So, yeah. so it's it, stuff like that that you see, man. And you like, man, we just trying to move the ball. Like, I don't even care who's the hero at this And that's point. another thing. Like, yeah. it's only one football. You got – everybody want to make the big play, you know. So, everybody just got to do your job. And that's why I say it's so important to do your job when you don't got the ball in your hand. Everybody has a yeah. assignment. Everybody has a, a job to do. And as long as everybody doing their job, the play going to happen. Mm-hmm. And, and literally, that's the second time you said that, and that's the reason why I say Ezekiel Ellis is the best player I ever played with because how hard and how well he played without the ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Literally. So you hit the nail right on the head with that one. A couple shout-outs. Uh, first shout-out is for bringing us in like that because the fans just got a feel of yeah. the real locker room. That was elite. Yeah. Second yeah. shout-out to Travis Kelsey for pulling Taylor Swift. <laughs> just say it. Just say no, it. I, My dude. I, I, I was going to say, look, listen to you guys talk ball, just from a fan perspective, we're just yeah. sitting on the couch fucking watching it. We yes. don't actually know what the hell Chinese. is going no. on. Hey, hey, like, hey. You hey, no you're idea. coaching middle school football now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but still, that's the whole other level. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get my guys it's, to pay attention. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's funny because when y'all saying so, uh, certain routes and stuff, I'm like, man, these people don't know what we talking about. Well, but, <laughs> But, but you can feel it, though. But, but you can feel it. But, but, That's but, literally why I do not talk ball. I can't oh, talk ball you're at so high to level. a a level of like. Yeah. Yeah. I get to talk. I'm like, yeah, well, oh, why you throw this? I'm like, well, they roll the safety ball. Yeah. They, they're yeah. Because <laughs> what's so interesting is Urban did a breakdown on Big Ten Network of that last drive and he, exactly of doing the small things without the ball. Mm-hmm. It was like that one like seam route that the last play where he caught on the two-yard line, yeah. it was because the other wide receivers ran their route so hard. It, yeah. it, they were double teaming him basically and took him mm-hmm. off. It lift, lifted yep. the coverage, yep. not a lift it. So yeah. that's good. Yeah. But from a fan perspective, honestly, it was great to see like dudes make plays in like big moments. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. that stopping the fourth down, like that last offensive drive, because just – from my perspective, I had a lot of question marks of like, is this team legit? <laughs> and going into this game, I was like, we're going to find out which team's like legit. Yeah. And I think this was a huge statement win for the, the entire rest of the season. Yeah. And what's crazy, guys, and we said this a lot about two teams primarily um, historically throughout college football early on in the years as overrated Michigan and Notre Dame. 
we always say, oh, they get all this hype for no reason. <laughs> Notre Dame is legit. Mm-hmm. That's a legit team. Yeah, it's legit. They, they got some smoke this week with Duke, yeah, though. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I really want to see. That's I hope Duke legit. don't smoke up. Because Riley Leonard is nice down there. Yeah. yeah. I want to see. Yeah, we definitely need them to uh, roll yeah. everybody the rest of the season. Well, yeah, so Michigan's right. Right, 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 right. That's true. So, yeah. what's your guys' thoughts on Penn State? It seems like Penn State's getting a lot of love right now. What's your guys' thoughts on them? They're hitting a the sweet spot. I think Penn State is for real. I like them. Yeah. We were talking in the parking lot. Yeah, I think the Big Ten East is the best league in the. College the best football. conference whoa, in college football. Whoa, 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 Big Ten whoa. East. What's yes, sir. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going. Well. No, yeah. no, no, come no, on. no, no, no. I, we'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> Let's get the Penn State. Let's get the Penn State. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say this. And, here, and, and I'm going to stand on this. Maryland's 3-0. and Rutgers is 3-1. and They went up to Michigan. They gave them a first half. Penn State is undefeated. Michigan is undefeated. Ohio State is undefeated. The best conference in college football is on Big Ten East, and I and I just truly believe that. And we have some of the best quarterbacks in college football per capita. Now they won't be NFL draft prospects, but in the college game, Drew Aller and what those the pair of running backs are, are doing, and then just defensively, they manhandle Iowa. And I thought Iowa, I had them pick to win the West in yeah. the Big Ten this they year preseason. No points, they yeah. manhandled yeah. them boys yeah. this weekend. So, yeah. and what I get fear about. Penn State plays good at Ohio Stadium, bro. Yeah. They just Always. they play good Always. in Ohio Always. Stadium. Like and, and a few times they came in beat here <laughs> yeah, has yeah. been like when yes. we were like kind of you know big favorites <laughs> or, or things like that. But Penn State, I think they're getting a lot of. I'm gonna give them a lot of love because they return seven starters on defense. Let's start there. Yeah, three guys up front. Let's start there, and that's helping with two of the top two running backs. Probably two of the. I mean, these guys are probably top. 15 running backs in the country. And then with everything around Drew, like I said before, with Kyle as a, a new starter, um, you know, you coming into a strong defense that's not going to put you in no bad situations, and you coming into a solid run game with three returning starters up front. And that's what's helping Drew a lot. And, I mean, Drew was one of the top prospects in the country two years ago, mm-hmm. right? So I expect him to continue to get better with more and more reps. But to your point about them being the best conference in college, I, I think it's the Pac-12. With the with the quality. you know they playing seven on seven Cardell be real man <laughs> you see what oh, no, this ain't no defense nowhere over there whoa 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 there's no knock to Michigan State because I know they're going through some turmoil right now but you see what Washington just came here and did absolutely okay so I think Penix is going to be at the Heisman yeah did you see that yeah. Washington State and Oregon State game I love Ward. I love okay. war. And then yeah. did you see – well, USC is still kind of a little shaky to me right now. Oregon is a good team. But, yeah, and Oregon's then – no, Oregon – I'm talking about Oregon State and Washington State game. Last I'm week. telling you, I saw but, war. But yeah, Oregon, Cameron war. Yeah, but Oregon as well. And then I like uh, USC. I mean, USC will see in another two weeks when they play a top opponent out there. But I think – I'm going to give it to the Pac-12. And I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm saying I it's never heard like, anybody say the Pac-12 bit, is the strongest in the yeah, yeah, I think a quarterback. And also, and also, I think their quarterbacks are – they have the best quarterbacks in the country. They, yeah, they're throwing the ball think, well. Yeah. yeah, but they're so, not playing – They're the defense is it's like, come on, man. Yeah, we'll defense see. is rough. Come I mean, on, they're, they're, are they playing good fans. defensive football out there? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, what's your thoughts on Michigan? I know, like, they acted like Harbaugh basically passed away with the four or whatever <laughs> first game. But, like, what's well your thoughts yet. on that? Because, th- what, uh, McCarthy, like, didn't have a good game, like, the past few weeks. Like, why aren't they getting talked about? Because they, they haven't played anybody yet. And they ain't yeah. yeah. about to play nobody. Yeah. 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 So, play I, nobody. so, I'm not yeah. counting them. And they're, like, a top. I know they, they rank in a little bit, you know, showing that from what they did last year. And they haven't lost a game yet. But I'm not going to count them as a top team. You know, I think the best team in the Big Ten right now is is Ohio State because of the quality win they've had. Yeah, that's the only reason why. But clearly, the Big Ten still go through Michigan. Yep. Let's, let's not act like that. But um, you know, Penn State had a few good wins. I think uh, what, Pitt was it? No, West Virginia. Yeah, yeah. West Virginia. Yeah. Then you know, like you said, manhandled Iowa, a team that's mm-hmm. you know not known to score a lot of points, but not mm-hmm. known to give up a lot of points either. Mm-hmm. Especially known for toughness and grit. And the way they thirty-one zero, I think the score was. Mm-hmm. Um, so Penn State is, I think they're legit as well. Going back to my comments, so because what? Because Michigan is traveling into Penn State, right? Michigan is at oh, Penn yeah. State. Yeah, yeah. Penn State. That's yeah. gonna be, That's gonna be a big two one. weeks before they play the Buckeyes. That's I'll, a big one. I'll take uh, Penn State in that game for sure. That's oh, for sure. Yeah. First Michigan, they're getting yeah. it done for sure. I, I just um, not that I'm, I've, I've watched Michigan a lot. I just don't. I just don't see that that dog in them like like yeah. obviously the last two years they were super physical and everything and you know they beat us whatever whatnot but it's just something about this year is it's like uh it's almost like they they think they shit don't stink mm-hmm. and then once they get hit in their mouth like it's it's, it's gonna yeah they crumble. haven't yeah, yeah it, it sucks to 
have to wait so long to get that real test. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a long time. And then sometimes, <laughs> you yeah. know, when you wait that long to get a test, it's, it's, it's too late. It's too, mm-hmm. you can't yeah. really rebound, rebound mm-hmm. from yeah. it because especially if you lose to Penn State and Penn State coming here and Ohio State coming here mm-hmm. and they're one of those guys going to represent, you know, most likely the East in the Big Ten Championship game. Yeah. So it's going to be a little bit too late for Michigan mm-hmm. um, in that type of scenario potentially because if you lose to Penn State, I would like to believe you're going to lose to Ohio State as well. And, uh, you know, no two-loss team has been to the college football playoff in this era, and we'll see next year. But, yeah, it sucks when it, you got to wait until week 8, 9, 10 to mm-hmm. finally get tested. And I don't know how my guys will respond when they finally get punched in the mouth. Right. Yeah. 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 We talked Colorado for a second. What do you think What do you think about Dion's kid as QB? He looks – Shador, um, yeah, he I, looks solid. <clears throat> I, I think he is a um, – you know, I think he's a solid player. I, I, don't, I don't think great yet, but I think he will be great. Yeah. Um, as he continued to play higher quality opponents overall, I think overall Colorado is a decent team at best. Yeah, I agree. Mm-hmm. But when things all flow and they're a good team, when things is perfect, when it's all the stars align. So yeah. Dion hit the nail on the head. They still have some players away, and they know that. He said mm-hmm. we seven, eight dogs away. Yeah, and, and <laughs> yeah. this is no knock on them because yeah. what he's still overachieving from what yes. they was last yeah, year. They won one like game that. last year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think the Vegas had them uh, over uh, the under three and a half or something like that win totals. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but as they continue to play quality opponents, like this week USC, USC. they got to still play Washington State. They got to play. Not Washington. having Travis Hunter against USC is tough mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's gonna make a big difference. Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> I think you're right. I get what you're saying. I get yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you know he got this program going in the right direction, and I don't think is. I think we sooner rather than later to Let's see the transformation. Yeah, 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 of Colorado. Yeah. You know, I had the someone asked me the question about a week ago about no a few days ago if I was coming out of high school and this is I want to ask you guys this question as well mm-hmm. were you guys more enticed to go to a program to add to their legacy or to change the culture in one and you got a few more guys if we're all top recruits and, and three <coughs> going to Alabama and us four and us five got an opportunity to go to a place like Colorado and we all dogs and we say we can go change it here we can go be those stepping stones where people look back and say, when did that switch change? I'm, oh, it was 2023. 20, yeah. That's a great question. I think because my question was, my answer to that, I said, if I got two or three more guys going with me, and this is this is God honest truth, I'm going to Colorado over anybody. Yeah, or, or, or a program like that yeah, where mm-hmm. the coach is there, is established, and he's going in the right direction. The buzz is there, yeah, and yeah. a That's few it. more dogs the is there as well. So, the and I'm like, I look back at my – commitment to Ohio State. We was going through a turmoil where yeah. Ohio State easily could have been Florida State when Jim Official left. A no, program. That's never going to happen, bro, bro. It could have been. We, we, we're we not talking about what we walked into in 12, and there's no knock on you guys, yeah. of all the turmoil. Oh, you said lived, what record? Like, I'm not saying a, their record, <laughs> but far yeah. as the turmoil, what it took for them to get back to that, going through a new coach, right? Yeah, I mean, I don't Going know. to get players, because we all you guys have left, the dogs have left at okay. Ohio State. Only guy who was really back was Johnny Simon, uh, Braxton, Braxton was Miller, young. Devin Smith, Devin was Ryan young. Shazier, Ravi Roby. There were some dogs okay, but there, still, bro. Though, but, still, but you still had to go get dogs, though. You had to go, you get, had to dogs, go get dogs, knowing that you couldn't play in a championship game or bowl season, yeah. and you had, I think we had 15 scholarships. 20, I think it was. Yeah, it so was how? Like so yeah. so. So you're going to, to Colorado if you if Dion's there in 2012. And, I, and I'm going with some dogs. Okay. Yeah. yeah no, no, I'm going with some dogs to go change yeah. something and to establish something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well, going with you dogs. going boom. <laughs> <laughs> Times have changed totally, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I can't sit here and say that just because what Dion got going on, I would have went there. What mm-hmm. I would have thought about it, maybe. You know, mm-hmm. maybe if I took a visit up there and, like he said, we would have had a core of guys going all together. Mm-hmm. I might have thought about it, but, you know what I'm saying, that, that's almost saying, like, you know, if back in the day we would have had a group of guys going to an HBCU. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What you thinking about that? Well, I think the when you think about Colorado, right, and versus the HBCU, this is no knock on either. And I say a place like that, so not necessarily saying I'm going to play for it's D.C. Power five, anybody. It's right. power five, though. I, I want to still go to a place where I'm competing at a high level. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're so I don't ever you. see myself going yeah. to an HBCU just yeah. because yeah. of the overall quality. Now, you got a sprinkle of guys everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But I want to play at a high level and compete at a high level each That's and right. every day on top of practicing against dogs every day as well. You going, boom? Probably not, no. Yeah, yeah, no. I, Absolutely not. Just, I'm a just, blue blood guy. I'm just, going just to work. Just because I know, I know, 
me coming to Ohio <laughs> State, I knew the history of the running back room. Right. I knew the history of, you know, being from Ohio. You go to Ohio and you show out, you know, it could change your life. Yeah. You know, um, so that's that was big for me. Yeah. You know, it, for me growing up, it, it was either I was either going to – Ohio State or Michigan, yeah, Michigan. Or, or, yeah. or Michigan. You know, yeah. and I, I think that was a big thing for that most was, for most kids of, who pretty much yeah. for who all grew of us up, you know, here. in Northeast Ohio. Like yeah. it was either you was going to Ohio State or you, you was going to the, to, to the team up north. But uh, I mean, I love what Prime's doing. He, he's changed the game. Um, I think we've we yeah. we helped change the game, you know, in, in a way. But he's doing a great job, and yeah. uh, I think. Uh, you know, he's going to get some guys. He's going to wheel some guys over there for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah I think he's going to – I yeah. think his majority of his guys, he's going to live in a portal. Oh, yeah, I absolutely. think that's where it's mm-hmm. going to happen because yeah. it's still going to be hard to recruit guys to Colorado because you got to go against USC. Yeah. You got, well, not anymore after this year, but you're going to go against these other top university that has a little more clout behind the name, a little more tradition behind the name and things like that. But I think he's going to live in a portal where, you know, guys looking for a second home and saying, I don't, you know, as a, as a recruit, a lot of that flashy stuff is attractive to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A lot of that, yeah. like, you know, the, they the, love the photo shoots and, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. But I think you go spend a year or two in, in one of these bigger programs where you probably not get as much playing time as you, and you go look for a new home. All that shit will go out the window. I want to go where the best player is going to play. I want to yeah. go where he's yeah. keeping it real with me. Like, hey, you good? You, you good? I you ain't, ain't, you ain't. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to the these, you know what I'm saying, the universities, the Blue Bloods, and, it, and that's for football or basketball. And I had, I had an understanding, you know, like when I committed Ohio State, I knew what was upon my shoulders, boom, and I had to carry on the legacy of light skinned receivers at Ohio State. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? Like you talk to Terry Glenn, hey. you talking Chris Carter, yes. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Devin Smith, Brian Salave, Brian Rubisky. Yeah. I was I take pride and being in that line of yellow dudes <laughs> catching <laughs> touchdowns, bro. I never <laughs> heard it like we that. Got, we got to so t- take a quick break. We're right back, and I'm going to tell you guys what I would have done. <laughs> All right, we're back. Um, I wish I got recruited to play football, which I did not. Yeah. But here's what I – me and Coach Prime, we play the same position. So this is my thing. I'm a, I'm a white DB. <laughs> so Jason I'm thinking, Seahorn. yes, facts. <laughs> Dustin Fox, I guess he was a safety, right? Yeah, so anyway, so shout out Dustin. I think that because I play the same <laughs> position as Dion, I would have went to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Secondly, I made you know the social media is my game. Yeah. So at the end yeah. of the day, yeah, I'm you're seeing that. Yeah, you're seeing the value. Hell of that. Yeah. yeah, I'm seeing tons of value nil. I'm seeing the way that what a lot of people miss about Dion is that they don't think he's disciplined, mm-hmm. and so his oh, prep. No, he is. Correct. No, and so is. that's where people are missing it. So you guys know, but I think yeah. sometimes because people get caught up in how flashy he is, they don't think he's uh, militant on the backside. And so the reality is he might even be more of a disciplinarian than people realize. So you're really signing up to go to work there. But you're going to get all of the new age stuff because he understands it, unlike a lot of these other guys. Yeah. And I, I think Ryan Day had to act like that because I think the position – I think what's happened is the pressure that's coming from Dion is so authentic mm-hmm. and it's so – and it's got all the juice. These other dudes got to be more themselves. Yeah. I think yeah. because he's drawing them. Yeah, you think that's what's hurting probably, Dabo at Clemson? Hell yeah, yep. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm looking at that thinking, I'm trying to go be around that. Yeah, yeah. it probably yeah. gave him an opportunity – that, you know, outside of unleashing all those emotions to really be himself and say, you know what, this right here ain't got to be politically correct. You know what I'm no. saying? Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you, you know. Um, They're all feeling the pressure, though. Yeah, a, little. A, lot of, a lot of people in these situations and, and, and like us debating Dion and all the other coaches around the country, he's just doing it differently. He's still getting guys – working hard he's still being this yes. he still is running mm-hmm. a program like the, it should be ran and he's just doing it differently Dion was always to me looking I didn't have the fortune enough to see him play when he was in his prime but you know knowing who he is knowing his his uh charisma and like he was always before his time oh yeah. he yeah. would have crushed it in this day and age bro oh, uh, yeah. listen media I, I grew oh, yeah. up Travis, watching him bro. Travis, it was right unbelievable and all this no. other stuff there's he nobody more it. impactful for the culture as an athlete persona the way you act dancing to me I, i'm a there's two, two guys, guys for me alan iris and yeah, 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 yeah. dion <laughs> and i'll be honest nobody wanted to grow up being like like michael jordan the person because we didn't know him but i didn't know anything we heard speculations about Oh, MJ was mean to his team. Up until the last dance during COVID, we yeah. we didn't – those were all myths, right? Yeah. Or Jordan Gamble, like, really, what? Like, he smoked cigars before the game. Like, oh, until last dance, we didn't know. <laughs> now, that Jordan now, 
we would have embraced him or we would have like loved and hated him you know like he, you're on one side of the line and but Allen Iverson and Dion growing up you know the way that you wore like I would cut my mom's stocking holes and put a wristband <laughs> here to, to be like Allen Iverson like I was tying my bandana under my helmet to be like Dion you yeah. know what I mean so yeah. impacting the culture and just the swagger and you know what they say the field drip now like man Dion would have killed it you gotta man. throw Mike Tyson in there too I ain't want to be like Mike. Right. <laughs> not a chance. Hey, not, not a chance. Hey. <laughs> First of all, Mike was a. Hey, I'm just talking about. I'm talking about. Not a chance. You know what I'm saying? He had the Royce Royces. He had the jewelry. You know what I'm saying? No, all of that. that. I ain't seen nothing from Mike tiger. but knock out. I like, I like Roy Jones Jr. No, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Roy was. He was hard. Yeah. Muhammad yeah. Ali? Yeah. Muhammad Ali. He you was know what hard. Saying? Yeah. yeah. I ain't. Yeah. I ain't ooh. I ain't even <laughs> Mike Banaka. <laughs> That's all I knew. Y'all see the type boom on, man. Yeah. Like, like, hey, yeah. I want to tie up the Dion thing real quick. It, it's uh, it's the back it up. At the end of the day, all of that can be said. I don't know if that dude ever lost a race on the playground. <laughs> he ran a four two whatever. We got in the limo and and dipped after the combat. Like Legend. he just backed it up, and now. He's getting the chance to do it at a coach. And I think it's a lesson. I tweeted this. It's a lesson in belief, preparation, confidence, and then going to have to deliver when you got to. And I think he's teaching a lot of people. They don't even realize what he's teaching them, but it's impressive. Mm -hmm. And I was the same. I grew up watching Bo Jackson and Dion. I'm mm -hmm. older than you guys. So, like, I, this is when I was a kid. I'm watching this happen. I'm watching him start for the fucking Yankees mm -hmm. and then return kicks for the Falcons. Yep. And then I'm watching Bo do the same shit. I'm thinking to myself, like, damn, I can do that. Well, yeah, yeah, in the backyard maybe. <laughs> but the reality is it was super inspiring, and yeah. you could see them both do it two different ways. Bo was, like, more reserved, confident, and Dion was a flashy craziness. But I always liked the more, like, out crazy confidence because they was backing it up. So, anyway, I just think it's great for college football, but I think it's going to make everybody put on notice that they got to they gotta do some different things. Hey, so we got a bye week this week. No, uh -oh. Let's talk about bye week as a player. There you go. <laughs> All right. No. What are you doing? Going to bull, like you guys going to Bullwinkles or what? No, I'm not, I'm not, like like so 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 the fans don't know like as a bye week you know you look forward to a bye week, especially yeah. especially when you get a big win like that against Notre oh, Dame. Yeah, we up, you know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> oh I'm about to go to the crib, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But were y'all guys who like you stay you stay back at Ohio State, you know what I'm saying? You stayed in the film room, or was you the guy like? I'm shooting to the crib. I'm going to hang with the family, with the guys. Like, Polit being politically correct, yeah, I stayed in there, watched the film, and I just went, you know. Yeah, no, nah, not But me. being honest, yeah, but being honest, um, man, dude, I was at home before class was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, not me. I, I, we already had the plans boom on the side. Man, line. what? <laughs> I was back. Get there around 12. <laughs> I remember. One time you pull it up, I'm going to be there. Yeah. I need to get in with you. Nah, nah, bro. I, I got to go early. I, I know the guy at the door. Minutes, right. Nah, I'm, I'm going to come get you when I'm, I'm going to come get you at the door. Just text me when you right. get there because I'm going to be inside. <laughs> no, man. So my first bye week experience as a player, as a really player, playing in college football, was after the Big Ten Championship. My first bye week experience as a player, as really playing was after the Big Ten Championship game. Mm. Yeah. But I was at home while they still playing the replays of the game. <laughs> Gay was, I'm leaving from Indy to go home, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Local hero. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. You know, you about to get that. Oh, you about to get a home cooked meal. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. What's yeah. up? Y'all yeah. just yeah. play like, yeah, it was last night. You know, yeah, it went crazy. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> At, and guess where the first stop you going? To your high school. Of course. Rocking through the hall. Oh, yeah, nah. Yeah, what's up, y'all? <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, I think they do it a little different now because we used to have – like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, I think it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think they just got the weekend off. I think they used to have light practices all through the week. But it can hurt or harm you in the whole week, bye week preparation because all that momentum as That's a coach, you low-key yeah. nervous about yeah. losing that and losing that Keep edge. Focus. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. we used to – Trust always made sure that we, you know, we stayed focused. But he was going to give us – a couple of days, to, yeah, you know, yeah. Man. Shoot to know. the crib, be with the fam. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's not just like you, you off like Monday, you out of there. No, no you, not, like, not. like, like, like you gonna have film sessions. You gonna probably have to get two lifts in. Got to get them in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's 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 still a schedule. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But once that once Thursday, Friday hit, <laughs> you out there. Boom. Hey, look, he's telling y'all he going home. He ain't going home. Boom. <laughs> 
<laughs> boom, like, hey, boom, putting that shit on. <laughs> boom, gonna be outside, boy. Yeah, hey, outside we, with and, it. And we, I don't know how y'all did it, Dale, but like, I'm talking like bottle service, all that, like up. And I will say, <laughs> it, it, we was different, bro. We we had our fun and we played hard. You know what I mean? And and uh, the people around Columbus know. Mm-hmm. We're gonna stop at three, four spots. Mm-hmm. Nah, I remember just <laughs> thinking about that type of. Celebration because I never really celebrated after a win unless it was it was a national champion. We all went out in Dallas, but yeah. the uh, we had someone. It might have been C. Grant came and spoke to us before our first Michigan game in, in 2012, mm-hmm. uh, and he said something about no, it was Anthony Slagle. He was already on staff, and you know how they bring in somebody every day to talk about the rivalry. And he said something about you know after the game we already knew my boys we go have our bourbon. When I say the whole team looking at each other like this, oh, we bringing liquor to the <laughs> – <laughs> yeah. Man, when I say – well, the time we got back to Columbus from up there after our first game, we beat them 42-41. Yeah. That bus ride home, get real. Everybody was – Get real. Hammered. That's <laughs> fucking I'm like, awesome. It was so, and it was so funny because, yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't drink. I probably still have a drink every once in yeah. a while. But I'm just like, bro, if this make you feel like I don't want no parts. You already left <laughs> a big win. Oh. And then, See, did y'all do Mirror Lake? Was it? Did y'all do Mirror Lake jump? Yes. Oh, so y'all still had that yeah. that Thursday night? Yes. Boom. You Man. remember we all meeting at somebody's house on campus. We gonna walk no, over no, there. You know what we used to do? We used to go to the dorms. We like, hey, everybody would meet, at, meet the at the dorms, and we would walk, walk over. over. Everybody would park behind the dorms, and we yep. would walk over. And yep. like that Thursday night, man, it's an experience, because we, we got walk through yeah. after. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's sad that the guys that's playing now they don't get to have that uh, mirror like experience. Just like but integrating they, with the they, campus and the students. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what they do something different now. They all still, clearly can't jump in the lake because they yeah. drain it. But they all still kind of meet up there and mess around and stuff like that. Because in 2012 was the last jump. And then they start covering it. Well, yeah. they start gating it off and draining it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, No, they gate it off. And then in 14, they just drain it and they get drained it off. Because yeah. we knocked down. Well, they knocked down and gate it. I ain't yeah, saying yeah, we. Yeah. But, um, yeah, you jumped sucks. in? I jumped in, bro. Oh, you a wild boy. I can't nah, believe nah, nah. it. And then I remember, this was so funny, man. So, we sitting there getting ready for that game, right? The Mirror Lake is that Thursday. And <laughs> Coach Meyer down, like, every – from the Wood Fest to the Chip Fest, like, every time it was something big, I don't want to see – I don't want to hear about none of you guys there, blah, 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 blah. Now, this was Coach Rabel's first year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he's fresh out the league. He ain't yeah. trying to hear none of that. He don't care. <laughs> so, I'm sitting still, like, in the back of, like, the huddle of, like – you know, where we on the need to listen to the coach, what we're about to say. And Vrabel up there, as of course, Myers said, he like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely, I'm Man, that. we seen him. Coach Vrabel had his kids out there. <laughs> yeah. Carter and them out there jumping in Mirror Lake. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, yeah, go do that. Yeah. yeah I'm like, yeah. what? Coach is like, I ain't sh- go ahead. I ain't see y'all. Y'all ain't see me. Yep, yep. <laughs> like, wow. I love it, man. Yeah. Yeah, that's because he's diehard to the max, bro. Yeah. You're taking your kids out like that, it's amazing. Sure. Cool. You got anything, buddy? Yeah. Uh, one, yeah, one thing we got to really touch on is there's someone else disrupting college football right now. There's some team located in Ohio. Some people – there's at least one person saying it's the best team in Ohio. <laughs> that fucking guy right there. Treadway, what's the update on the Mac? Uh, the, uh, the Mac had a good week. You know, the, we've talked about it all – every Boomcast all season. There's really three teams you have to pay attention to in the Mac. It's the Ohio Bobcats, Miami Redhawks, and uh, Toledo. Uh, Toledo got a win. They played Western Michigan, won by like 18. Uh, Miami played a school for the blind and won. And then OU, uh, <clears throat> to the point of Michigan earlier, uh, Michigan last week played Bowling Green and won 31-6. to And then this week, OU went to Bowling Green on their homecoming and was up 31 nothing at halftime. So I'm not saying that OU is better than Michigan, yes, but I'm is. saying <laughs> OU is better than Michigan. Uh, final score is 38-7. Uh, an interesting statistic, I actually have to pull it up because I'll butcher this. Okay. <laughs> but um, they released, as I think uh, DeVere said earlier, the top 10 uh, defenses in the country. At number five is Ohio State, and they have an 85.3% stop rate, <laughs> and they're giving up 0.79 points per drive. Okay. OU at, huh? is number six. Oh, behind Ohio State, eighty-four point eight percent stops. Playing against who? And point <laughs> eight. Uh, you know, Iowa State. That's well, probably the. I got that's probably better than any other school. Oh, you is my Mac team, so man, get, 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 preach, man. I'm messing with uh, OU, bro. And, and to be, you know, completely 
non-biased bias. Uh, I think we're going to run the MAC this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bobcats are going to bring home the championship this year. On the year. way to Detroit, huh? See y'all in the yep. D? Yeah. We got we to gotta yeah. buy this week. We come home uh, against Kent. It's going to be homecoming. Can't read, can't write, can't beat the Bobcats. That's right. Like, we're going to come get it done. The showdown is going to be Halloween still. Uh, mm -hmm. Miami versus OU. Uh, they got to come home. Halloween. Halloween weekend. Halloween, Halloween weekend, weekend wow. baby. Nuts. Court Street cats come out, baby. Yeah. Uh, who knows? <laughs> 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 hey, we need to go down there with the beer, bro. Yeah, we, yeah, we need to I done did some Halloweens in Athens yeah. now, man. It's one yeah. of a kind. That's why I love yeah. having Depot on the, the bottom <laughs> because his brother is OU legend. Yeah. 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 Pocket yeah. full of Posey, the there greatest IG yeah, we need to go down there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we're, we're getting back. You know, our defense – OU's never been known for defensive like, – we've had good individual <laughs> defensive players, but never really this unit. And what we're doing now, you know, I'm not going to sit here and compare them to Ohio State because the level of competition Ohio State plays is that much better. But to be ranked sixth in the country, I mean, we're still playing non-conference schedule. We played Iowa State, you mm -hmm. know. We're, we're doing the right things and everything that we're doing, if we're in that national conversation, you know, hopefully we start to get some, some looks for a top 25 spot. Trent, I want to ask yeah. did that guy make that field goal or didn't he? No, make? no chance. <laughs> so did not make the field goal. It was the Iowa State game. The, the ball did not go mm. in. But they got the dub. Even yeah, yeah. if it would have went in, oh, you still would have had to – because we had an interception in the red zone. Which, okay. So we would have been able to kick a game-winning field goal or yeah. score it anyway. Are you like kind of upset that you got to wait like two more years to pull like to play the Buckeyes, or like do you think this would have been a year that you guys may have could have pulled it off? <laughs> <laughs> cool. Think about it. If 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 OU came to Ohio State this year, uh, the Boomcast the following week would have been very interesting. <laughs> 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 the only thing to make it interesting because maybe y'all mascot would have beat up Brutus again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he knows That's about it. Yeah. That was, uh, that, was, that, was you guys that, that was one of the, that, I was yeah. we were on one knee because yeah, we always run we would run through the tunnel. Knee. Well, we would run through the tunnel. <laughs> we would run through the tunnel. We would take a knee and pray. See y'all, it's possible. We was praying though. You know, we was we'd go to the end zone and pray pregame, and you know, we lift our head up, and they scrapping right here, and I'm like. <laughs> What's going on? Is this for real? For real? Right. Right. For real? Yeah. But Buddy was throwing real heat. Like, yeah. just like, I'm like, yeah. woo, he trying to knock something out. And Brutus was just like, huh? like, what? like, what is going on? But it was like, man, you talk about a legendary moment. I'll never forget that because I'm sitting here watching. I'm walking back. It kind of messed my whole pregame kickoff focus off because I'm like, man, what's, what's going on? And then my brother returns to open and kick. But it was a holding call. So I was kind of messed up for like five minutes. Like, yo, what's going on, bro? Like, this is crazy. If it would have happened this year, it would have been a totally different result. <laughs> Bobby's running the table. We got, we got defense. We got quarterback. We got everything. So I'm worried in 2025 a little bit, but Bobby's will get it done. So, but you're saying this year is the Bobcats year? This when is the Bobcats championship. Year. Yep. Give us top 25. Give us a decent bowl game. Yep. We'll shock the world. Going to like the Cheez Its Bowl or something like that, or nah, what? we don't need the Barstool Bowl Barstool, anymore. Yeah. Okay, Rose Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that's a good spot to wrap it up. This was a great boom cast. Thanks to our special guest of your posing, Cardell Jones. That's the boom cast, and this is Daniel. Boom, Baron. I'm your boy Corey G. We out here.